diverse about that, but he, uh, <laughs> he's coming. <laughs> so. No, he's 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 going. He's going. He's really, he's going. He's going. He's going. He's still have to go. <laughs> yeah, they put their condo on the This is the uh, August 22nd, 2018 meeting of the Lowell Conservation Commission. We have a long agenda tonight, uh, starting with continued business. We have a notice of intent uh, from LEC Environmental Consultants uh, for the uh, what's so-called Concord River Greenway. This particular project has been postponed several times and they are still requesting a continuation. So the Greenway uh, will not be heard tonight. It's DEP number 206-771. And this will be, I believe they've requested our September 26th, 2018 meeting where we will hear the proposal for the Greenway. Um, so do we need a motion to postpone till- I'll September? make a motion to continue it to the next meeting. Seconded? Seconded. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Moving along then, we have an enforcement order, 146-148 Alma Street, uh, and the violation was paving within land subject to flooding, uh, a floodway, and within 100 feet of the Beaver Brook. Uh, is there, uh, we did receive communication about this project. Uh, is there anyone here? for uh, wanting to speak about this particular project, 146148 Alma Street. Uh, this also will be uh, continued until our uh, September 8th meeting. Yeah, I believe that they were um, able to September make 8th. September 8th meeting. Uh, uh, we've received communication that they've hired a uh, consultant and are working on different uh, aspects of the uh, of dealing with the enforcement order. Uh, so could we have a motion to continue that one as well? I'll motion to continue to September 8th. Seconded. And all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, our, our next uh, item is an enforcement order. Uh, Fabio Di Miranda, 293 Wentworth Ave. Uh, the location of the enforcement was at 293 Wentworth Ave. And this is an order that we were dealing with uh, back in the fall, and we asked that he put off uh, uh, doing anything further about uh, lifting the order until we saw what might happen with the vegetation. So, uh, you, Mr. DeMarais. Excuse me. Yes. Excuse me, uh, commissioners. I asked to be recused from this from this business matter. Okay. All right. We still have four. So, uh, welcome, Mr. De Miranda. Hi. Good night. How are you? Uh, we saw some uh, photographs, and uh, some of us have been out back out to the site, and uh, uh, you must be pleased with it. I am. Since uh, we're pretty pleased with it as well, I think. I don't want to speak for everyone. But it looked uh, like everything was stabilized. It uh, uh, things have been perked up a little with the wall rebuilt and, and new trees planted. So uh, I wish you uh, good luck with maintaining all of that. Thank you. Thank and, you. And what's going on with the, uh, these heavy rainstorms we've been having? Well, we don't we don't have any problem with the 
uh, water back there and uh, the order I think the uh, the city has clean up the drain that's back there so it's and flowing better than it was it is it is it's draining out really fast okay so so you're not getting any washouts down that not slope at all. on your property not at all either my neighbor there is uh, low level than I am yeah okay uh, I I'm not uh, too concerned with uh, with uh, having problems in the future here. It, it looked good to me, and uh, I entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to rescind the enforcement order. Okay, motion to rescind. Do we have a second? I'll second that motion. Do we have some discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, okay so uh, thank you very much for uh, dealing with that, and everyone, I think, turned out happy, so. Yeah, I am really happy, and I appreciate all y'all. Uh, you know, I learned a lot, so thank you very much, and uh, everything I do back there, I will not even and, look and, at before uh, and talk now to you you're, guys. you're a conservation ambassador now. You have to educate your neighbors. Absolutely, uh, yeah. Both directions about Actually, the I've been, I've been talk to them about that I've been saying you know that's more important than uh, than we thought honestly well it affects everybody if you start messing around with drainage and filling things and absolutely yeah yeah okay so thanks for coming in no thank you thank you all Good night. Good night. Thank you, Pat. Uh, next, we, we, we do have an outstanding enforcement order uh, at 674 Varnum Avenue, which is a, a dumping of uh, yard waste uh, along a... Uh, oh, are you here for this project? Yes. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Uh, it, it was observed that uh, there was some uh, yard waste and perhaps some other items that shouldn't have been... Uh, dumped close to that uh, wetland area in the back, which I think might actually be a flowing brook. Uh, well, that what happened did, you know, but I, my... Could you identify yourself, please, for the record? Excuse you me? State your name and address. Yi Sang, it's 674, one map. Okay, so you're living in the house there? Uh, we don't live in the house, we rent the house. Okay. But we have the back, yeah, back, we have the fan in the back there. But the next door neighbor, they have they have the exit, you know, the exit go in the back there, you know. But we never dump them there. Okay, but, uh, so we'll uh, that up. it does appear to be directly behind your house, but you're saying uh, you're not responsible. No, we we can clean that up, and then I gotta put the fence cover the. Oh, I see. You're gonna exit. put a fence. Yep. Okay, and uh, now we <clears throat> we would like you to <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> we would like you to come back in once you have a plan for that fence, because if you get too close to the brook, we also have to uh, discuss the fence if you're going to be constructing something uh, close to the brook, close to the wet area. So even a fence is important to know what it is you have planned. So once you uh, decide what you'd like to do, uh, you come back in here with what's called a request for determination of applicability, an RDA, yep. and that's a form that the office can give you. Yep. And uh, then we look it over and see if it's going to be something that's going to affect the wetland area. Yep. So uh, have you cleaned up this area as yet, did you say? Not yet, but I will do tomorrow. Y you what? I will do tomorrow. Tomorrow, okay, all right. Uh, because we'll probably have uh, somebody from the commission or the office go out and take a look once you're done. So uh, do you have the phone number of the planning office here? Uh, you can give them a call and they'll come out and take a look and, and uh, maybe give you some suggestions about the fence as well. Absolutely, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I just, when we're done discussing, I would just wanna um, get his name and his contact info so we can continue um, coordinating, if that's okay. You what? Just to get his contact info so we can continue coordinating with the applications and the process. Contact info yet, so I'd like 
Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. When you're done discussing. Oh, sure. Um, anyone have any uh, comments or concerns that they'd like to bring up about this? We had dis discussed maybe some signage, but perhaps a fence is a little more friendly than a sign that says no dumping. We do have that on some apartment projects, signs that say resource area, no dumping or something like that, which uh, when you have a big area with a lot of people, it's almost necessary. Uh, but you, know, you with just a few houses right in that neighborhood perhaps can be the uh, sort of the watch guard of that area and make sure none of your neighbors start putting things over in that area either. It's, uh, you know, it's handy to just kind of dump things over an edge, but it does cause problems for other people in the neighborhood. It makes the water come up on their house and causes problems. So uh, I believe uh, we should probably leave the enforcement order in place. It has gone out, has it not? Did it go out? Yes, it did. Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll leave that in place until uh, you get a chance to uh, call the office and they'll let us know that you're finished with whatever you're going to do to get that stuff out of there that shouldn't be there. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take a... 30 second break here if you two want to exchange telephone numbers. Okay, moving along on our agenda, we have a notice of intent. This is Ideal Tape Company, 1400 Middlesex Street, DEP number 206-785. Uh, notice of intent to close and replace in kind a 7,300 gallon underground storage tank system. The proposed activities are within bordering land subject to flooding of the Black Brook. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Sam Butcher from Loraro Engineering, uh, here with Jeff Fellman from Ideal Tape. Um, I guess the first question is an administrative one. Do you take the green cards? Do you want the slips? And, and a second administrative question. I understand you all have plans. Would you like me to use a plan and an easel, or do you want to fly off your own? It's, it's a straightforward project, so maybe if you have questions, I can bring it up if you need it.
Make sure it's green once and then you're good. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Um, Middlesex Avenue is up here. Blackbrook is over here. Residential properties are over here. Uh, the, as I said, the building is right here. There is an existing tank field right here. Um, and what we're trying to do, or what we would like to do, is replace one of the, one of the three storage tanks that's in this existing tank farm. Uh, the project. The, the existing tanks are located closer to the brook than where our new project is going to be, so we're moving farther into the parking lot than we already are. Uh, it will require an excavation that will be open for no more than a week. Um, we are not going to be changing the flood storage capacity, the paved area, um, and as you can see, the bulk of our work, this is the uh, FEMA line, the bulk of our work is is very much toward the margins of the uh, uh, land subject to flooding. So uh, we believe it's a fairly straightforward project. I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay, so uh, if you were to put a buffer zone line on this plan, uh, I, I mean, would it be good? Would it come into your plan? We, the, the buffer we don't, to the, we don't have any way to know where right. the, the... The brook is actually greater than 200 feet. The brook, as a, from, from the perspective of a riverfront, is farther than 200 feet away from our project. The buffer zone to the wetlands is um, certainly off the paved area, which is right here. Um, and I did not delineate it. It's, it would be in this area. My, my sense would be is that our project is going to be greater than 100 feet from it, um, and it's the, the land subject to flooding that is bringing us before you. Okay, so if you were to, uh, you have a straw wattle along the south here. Right, based on the direction of slope of the parking lot. So that's the way the drainage goes. Right. Uh, you know, would it make sense if you're going to have stockpiles to have the uh, erosion control also on We could the certainly extend the limit side? of work. We could extend the limit of work up to here. And then that does sort of delineate a limit of work as well, which is why we like erosion control. Oh, understood. Too. Yep. Well, certainly our work is not going to extend off the, the pavement, but we can certainly extend the limit of work up, you know, more or less parallel to the edge of the parking lot. The paved surface. It's not this. This portion is not used for parking. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, were you going to? How are you going to deal with the? Uh, you're going to be uh, excavating. You're going to keep all of that material on site and reuse it. No, because of course the tank itself is going to is going to occupy some of the space that was otherwise used for soil. We've tested the soil already, um, and it, uh, there's no evidence of any contaminants in the soil, so it'll be taken off site. Okay. But we're not going to be reusing it on site. So you won't be stockpiling it very long then? 
No, no. Our intention is layers. to is to um, stockpile it only for as long as the project takes. We're looking to button this thing up as quickly as possible. This park it, this parking lot is actively used, so we have a built-in incentive to move the project along. Okay. So uh, should there be a, a stockpile there of some sort? Uh, I'm not sure it would need to be covered, but. Uh, would it be possible to put a, a ring of hay bales we have, around we've it? We've done that, yep. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, it, there's apparently uh, storage out beyond that storage of items, I don't know, pallets and things, out beyond where your work is, beyond the paved area perhaps? No. Currently, I mean? We're not, we're not planning it. I, I don't know. I, I thought there was an, uh, a note here about you were going to be taking, moving them out and then bringing them back or something. Oh, there may be some dry storage, pallet, things like that, uh, that will have to be temporarily moved I, I as part of that. I was curious as to how far that storage is. Is that in the buffer zone or? No, it, it may be in it, it, the, the very margins of the... Um, you see where this line, the FEMA line, comes in. It may be in the very margins of this. Um, I, I think that the reference is to temporary storage of material that will have to be moved, but but that's going to be moved within this this area. I don't. Maybe I'm not I, understanding the question. I was just hoping that if things were being moved around, that there was some way to keep any th objects like that out of the uh, out of the buffer zone, the hundred foot buffer zone. If you have some place else can, to put them. We'll, we'll look at that. That's a, that's a good suggestion. You're saying take the opportunity to move the stuff out of the buffer zone. Right. Yes. But if you're going to be yep. moving it anyway, probably. Yep. We, we can certainly do that. Yep. Because there, there is that concern about uh, if flooding does come up of things floating away and sure. causing damage to other properties. Sure. So uh, that we'd be interested to know, you know, where you were planning to put that, if that's something that you can accomplish. I, I can't speak to, to that store? specifically. I, I apologize. I can't speak to that specifically because I don't have a good enough knowledge myself of, of what the nature of the material might be. Okay. But I can commit to, uh, as part of this project, looking at, the, at what that material is and trying to seek an alternative location if that's appropriate. Right. And what are, what are these tanks made out of? Metal? Steel. Yeah. Steel. Double wall steel. So this And, and it's, a, it's a coated steel. It's a cathodically protected tank. So the abandoned tank, is that in danger of like rusting through and collapsing? Nope. And that's going to be filled with an inert material. It's typically what we call a flowable fill, which is a very weak cement. So the, the idea is that the closed tank gets filled with a flowable fill right up to the brim. Um, so, though it shouldn't degrade, if it does degrade, there's nothing, there, it won't create a void. Okay. Uh, now, is there any uh, regulation about having tanks in, in, a, in a bordering land subject to flooding area? Do they pop out of the ground or? Well, that's one of the reasons you put stuff in it, is so they don't become buoyant. Um, and that certainly the flowable fill will keep it in. Uh, the underground storage tank regulations require that you remove storage tanks that you're going to abandon. There's a provision, and it's frankly the provision we're going to be using, uh, that allows us to keep the tank in the ground if removing it would jeopardize the structural integrity of another structure. And in this case, as you can see, there, there are two other tanks here. If we were to remove the tank that we're closing, we would risk shifting these tanks, which obviously we don't want to do. So are you grandfathered in for adding this new tank uh, from some regulations that maybe have come in? or? Uh, I wouldn't say that it's grandfathered. It's you're, permitted. You're permitted just on its own merit. Yeah. Yes. I mean, the, the I, I can't think of a regulation that would not allow it. Um, the, the tank regulations are silent to where this tank would be located. It would be the either your local bylaws 
or the wetlands regulations that might speak to the storage of hazardous materials. And, and certainly where this is an existing activity, I would think it would be grandfathered. And is it, is it a hazardous material that you're storing there? It's a, an organic solvent. It's a toluene blend. So it, it technically it's, it's regulated by DOT as a hazardous material. So it's safer to have it underground than above ground, for instance? Uh, I, much safer from a fire prevent. If there were ever a fire here, you would want these underground. Um, it's much safer from the perspective of handling because all the piping is underground and less subject to be dinged by the, you know, the errant forklift. Um, some would say they'd rather have an above ground because then you can see it, you can understand where the tank is, and you can see damage. Um, there's, an, I, mean, there, I think there's sort of two schools of thought on that. Um, so. Okay, so you have a construction schedule of about one week. Once we get going, yeah. And then you'll be paving over it, is that correct? Yes. Okay, seems pretty straightforward. Uh, questions from the board? So the new, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, the, new, the new concrete pad, is that elevated or is that going to be flush with the That'll new? be flush. That'll be flush, okay. And then um, the, the tank that you are abandoning, it, it says that it's going to be filled with clean sand on the, but I was actually hoping you were going to do flow fill. So that's yeah, good. yeah, no, yeah. It, it'll be, my understanding is it's going to be flow fill. Okay, so if you could just make that a, adjustment yep. to flow fill. Um, and I think that's all I have. Uh, okay. Is it going to be the same material? Uh, In, within the tank? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I noticed that in your proposal, um, you addressed the wetland resource area. And I was really pleased that you cited the, um, the Natural Heritage Atlas that there's no, it, the site um, states that there is no um, danger to like vernal pools or any of the rare wildlife species if there was there, but there isn't. And I was pleased to see that you actually put this in your proposal. I think that's important for a lot of your neighbors to know that because, you know, we are, we have a lot of wetlands around and I don't think they actually consider the wildlife or the smaller amphibious wildlife that could be there, that could be affected and of course, it's the domino theory once you start dealing with that. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for addressing that. Thank you. Anything? And I just want to note too, I'm not worried about the stockpile because it's only going to be a week or two. So I'm yeah. assuming you're watching the weather and you're not going to start doing this when there's a torrential oh, downpour. So. No, no, no. Yeah. You can tell when the downpour is coming these days. Yeah, but, but still, you know. You <laughs> no, our intention is to do it early in the fall. Okay. So. Okay, is, it, is there anyone, this is a notice of intent, I believe. Mm -hmm. So is there anyone from the public that would like to speak on behalf or make comments about this project, 1400 Middlesex Street, Ideal Tape? Any comments or concerns? Comments or concerns? Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Motion to close the public hearing, seconded by Seconded. Caitlin. All those in uh, favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and now we can entertain. Uh, I'll make a motion to issue a standard of City of Lowell uh, standard order of conditions with um, two special conditions. One, that we extend the 12 inch compost waddle um, up the west side parallel to the edge of the parking lot. And then also that um, we change the clean sand to flow fill in that tank. Should we, I, I guess we can't mention keeping things out of the buffer zone. Could we do that? Um, well, you said the buffer zone, sure. I believe the buffer zone is. Past the pavement, it's not even okay. on that. Okay. Yeah. I think everything is out of the buffer zone, correct? No, I yeah. was thinking of storage items. Like down here, the stockpile area? Yeah, not stockpile, but things that they store out there. So during and during construction, keep no, things out of no, the buffer. No, not zone? during. All the time. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, the, the only thing is, is if he doesn't have the 
line delineated. It's right. kind of like a gray zone. Right. So I don't right. know. Okay. Well, we've got it in the record. Yeah. So. Okay. So we have two conditions. Uh, motion made. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay. Motion made and seconded. Any further discussion from the board? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, if I could have a motion to take uh, Boot Hydropower, uh, the Broadway Street Bridge over the Pawtucket Canal out of order, please. I'll make a motion to um, move that up on the agenda. Okay, and seconded. And all those in favor. Okay, so we'll hear the uh, Boot Hydropower request for a certificate of compliance on the Broadway Bridge at this point. Before I get started, I have some uh, construction photos. I'm not sure if that was included. Okay, we had some wonderful photos that uh, were in the, uh, I guess they were in the, or they sent them, them to us on, yeah, on email. Thank you. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Yep. Okay, this order of conditions uh, was issued in August of 2015, and uh, they took the entire three years, as I think the neighbors in that neighborhood realize, to uh, uh, finish the bridge. And uh, I must say I'm pretty impressed with how it came out. Uh, I especially like the fact that the old stone walls were able to be saved. Uh, in fact, I'm I like that design a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, do you have anything to add about uh, the project? No. Uh, uh, could you identify yourself, yep. please? Yep. Um, Madam Chair, uh, members of the commission, uh, for the record, my name is Mike Riccardi. I'm an engineer with TEC in Andover here tonight on behalf of Boot Hydro um, for the Broadway Street Bridge. Um, here tonight seeking certificate compliance for the project. Uh, we were responsible over the, as you said, three year uh, more or less construction period for construction oversight for all major construction activities. Uh, myself, other engineers were on site fairly often, uh, multiple times a week to make sure things were being done correctly. Uh, as you see in those attached photos, uh, contractor utilized um, compost filter tubes for erosion control, um, on the banks, they also positioned barges and debris netting underneath the existing bridge um, during demolition, um, both matters to protect the canal and the resource area. Um, so as, as I said previously, just looking to um, seek acceptance for the certificate of compliance that we submitted. Okay, so is the boat travel able to go under that bridge now? I was there Monday and I saw a, uh, I, I, well, to backtrack, um, the contractor was able to coordinate with parks to more or less allow boat traffic to be more or less uninterrupted through construction. But I was there Monday and I saw a boat tour going on um, while I was on site, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I, I think uh, I like the fact that you took pictures as the project was progressing. Yep. 
so it's a, it's a nice little diary of how, how the project went. Thanks. Uh, I, I don't have any concerns. Uh, I'd just like to compliment the, uh, the outcome. And Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have some comments? Yeah. Looks awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. good job. Thanks. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion to issue a certificate of compliance. Motion made and seconded by Caitlin. Uh, any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Okay, now moving moving back one space on our uh, agenda, we're now uh, going to hear a notice of intent uh, submitted by Norman Martin for DSM Realty of Tewksbury. The DEP number is 206-786. The location is 677 through 705 Pawtucket Boulevard. And this is a... a for the construction of a 71,000 square foot market basket supermarket and a 12,400 square foot retail space at 677 Pawtucket Boulevard with landscaping, parking, stormwater management, utility improvements, reconstruction of the existing parking lot for the restaurant at 705 Pawtucket Boulevard and uh, the resources, uh, both properties contain land within the 100 foot floodplain, uh, bordering land subject to flooding of the Merrimack River. Welcome. Introduce yourself. Good evening. Uh, members of the Conservation Commission, my name is Gregory Curtis. I'm an attorney here in Lowell with Goldman and Curtis at 144 Merrimack Street before you tonight uh, for DSM Realty, which is the owner of the property at uh, 677-705 Pawtucket Boulevard. Also uh, with me tonight is uh, Eric Gerard, who's a project um, manager from VHB, who's handling uh, the project for the uh, DSM uh, Realty. Um, again, as you indicated, this is a new shopping uh, <coughs> center retail development of a uh, supermarket that's uh, been long talked about in that area and uh, now it's hopefully coming to fruition. Um, it's the site of the old Lowell Drive and it's about 14 acres in size and as a result of the proximity to the uh, Merrimack River and the within the 100 year floodplain we're here before you tonight to um, explain and also uh, seek guidance from the Commission as to um, the best way to uh, approach this. The, uh, we were before the planning board on Monday night. We were hoping to get before the Conservation Commission prior to go to planning, but we have a reschedule at the planning board for October 1, so we can try to incorporate uh, a complete plan when we go back there. Also, we're going to the Board of Appeals for a, uh, for a curb cut and a few things at the uh, Board of Appeals. I think that's next week. So rather than uh, falling outside of my expertise, I'll ask Mr. Gerard to come up and explain uh, uh, the exact procedure that we're looking to follow with regards to the conservation issues that are before you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Eric Gerard. I'm a civil engineer. With VHB. I'm working with uh, DSM Realty on the redevelopment of this property. Uh, just an introduction to the project. Greg pretty much already ran through it. Uh, VHB were the civil engineers, traffic engineers, uh, landscape architects uh, working on the project. DSM is the owner, uh, RMD is the development arm. Jim Lamp uh, couldn't make it tonight. Um, he's also representing um, DSM and Goldman and Curtis is our local council. Uh, the proposed project is a 71,100 square foot market basket supermarket, a 12,400 square foot retail store that is directly adjacent to the market basket, and there's the existing JJ Boomer's restaurant where, where 
keeping that store. We're just upgrading the parking lot uh, to upgrade to the you know, new standards, make it compliant as far as uh, width and uh, adequate access, and adding some landscaping in that area. Uh, the proposed project is going to improve um, the overall site. It's pretty dilapidated right now. Access, utility improvements, uh, stormwater management, and landscape. Uh, in addition to that, there are traffic improvements and offsite improvements that are uh, being reviewed by the planning board, and it's going out to peer review um, with the, the traffic side of things. Uh, tonight, we'd like to go over just uh, some discussion points for the project. Uh, one, the project status, bring you guys up to speed on where, where we're at in reviews, where it's gone, where it's heading. Uh, the existing conditions, what's out there today, proposed project site improvements, um, and then just conclude. So currently the project, uh, we've been through in permitting or MEPA review at the state level um, over the past year. We filed the environmental notification form, a draft environmental impact report, and the final environmental impact report. And we received the, um, the final certificate from the secretary uh, April 13th of this year. Um, we also went before the planning board back in June for a preliminary hearing. Uh, we got some feedback at that hearing. We incorporated many of those comments into the plan set that you have today. Um, additionally, we also had the planning board hearing on Monday. That was our first meeting. Um, we are continued until the October 1st hearing. We've also had uh, multiple city staff coordination meetings with various departments as well as um, discussions and one meeting with the uh, Pawtucketville Citizens Council. Uh, this project requires us to be here tonight due to the fact that we are impacting border and land subject to flooding, which is the 100-year floodplain associated with the Merrimack uh, River. Uh, in addition, we need to go to planning board for the site plan review, as well as zone and board of appeals for our curb cut variance and signage. Um, additionally, at the state level, we will have um, a mass DOT access permit for uh, signalization and improvements um, at the intersection of Old Ferry and Pawtucket Boulevard. All right, so this is the existing site, as you guys probably all know it today. It's about 14 acres, which includes the JJ Boomers parcel. Um, it's a former drive-in movie theater. As you can see on the, the aerial there, there's some broken asphalt pavement. It, it, it's pretty hard to tell exactly where those limits of pavement are. So in our analysis, we were conservative and we didn't, we didn't include the existing pavement that we couldn't quantify out there um, when looking at the existing stormwater runoff. The site is zoned suburban mixed use and the existing restaurants approximately 7,800 square feet that will remain. It is at the intersection of Old Ferry and Pawtucket Boulevard and we are within the 100 year floodplain um, and why we're here tonight um, and submitted into Mass DEP uh, for review of the stormwater as well. The proposed site, as we mentioned before, will be the 71,100 square foot market basket, 12,400 square foot retail, and then the existing restaurant. As you can see, there's a new parking facility, uh, significant landscape improvements, um, driveway access improvements at the property. Um, all the loading facilities will be contained in the rear of the site. The grading of the property and stormwater management, I'll, I'll get into in a little bit. Um, I just wanted to give a general overview of the proposed site and what it will look like. So one of the main constraints at this property is the 100-year floodplain. Everyone knows the Merrimack River, when that floods, it's gonna flood. We can't stop it, it it's gonna flood. Under the, the state regulations, the Wetland Protection Act, any projects were required to mitigate any impacts to that flood storage at a one-to-one -one mitigation ratio. And the way that it's written in the regs is for every elevation on a foot-by-foot -foot increment, we need to mitigate that same volume within that foot-by-foot -foot increment. So we can't just mitigate it all at the highest elevation. We gotta make sure we're, we're doing it incrementally because when it floods, it doesn't always just flood to that highest elevation. So this is a, a figure identifying the overall FEMA firm, uh, the flood insurance rate map. Um, 
the overall map, and then I zoomed in to where our site is, the, the yellow is generally our property. As you can see, the, the teal color there is the 100-year floodplain with defined flooding elevation. You can see the whole area pretty much around the property is also within the floodplain. There is a small area in the center of the site that is lifted up above the floodplain, and that's primarily where the building's gonna be sitting. Um, but we will have impacts. In order to adequately build a parking lot at the elevation, um, to grade it out at a, um, you know, one and a half percent, ADA access and all that. Um, the parking lot needs to get lifted slightly and then we, slight, we, we gradually grade down to, to make up that flood storage. So this is the existing floodplain zoomed in a little bit more with our aerial. In the floodplain, the, the line isn't exactly as you would see on the FEMA flood map. Because once you get at a very site level, you got to do it based on the actual topography of the land and what the actual flood elevation is going to be. So this line represents the elevation 155 contour, and that's our site datum, and and that that's the area that will flood during the 100-year flooding event. Moving forward, a similar graphic, but under our proposed conditions. As you can see, the site, the building has been elevated out and the areas primarily around for the parking are also out, outside of it and then it grades down. During the, the MEPA review process, the state, um, as part of their resiliency measures and a lot of the items that they're looking at now is future flooding, future impacts, climate change, and how, what, what is the Merrimack River gonna do in 50 years, what's it gonna do in 100 years, and how can we try to mitigate those impacts um, now, they, they request that we, we lift the building as high, upwards of almost four feet above the existing um, floodplain elevation to elevation 149, uh, 159, um, but that, that is unachievable. Uh, building code right now is a foot above the, the floodplain, so we were able to get it up three feet above the floodplain, so the, the finished floor elevation is gonna be at elevation 158. Um, and that still allows us to mitigate the, the flood storage um, properly at a one-to-one, at a -one, at greater than a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio. The, the limits of the blue that you see there is primarily that 155 contour elevation, and that allows us to slope it back down um, to, the, to the property. And also moving forward with the notice of intent, intent application, um, we're required to design the stormwater to, to meet the Massachusetts um, stormwater management standards. Uh, so I'll just run through the, the drainage design. This is an um, a look at the existing conditions drainage area map. It's included in the stormwater management report. And this just breaks down the site of how we look at it to understand when it rains, where, where is the water going? And when it um, fills up, it, where is it over top and spilling um, in which direction? So this map shows our design point. So a design point's where we're, we're, we're analyzing where this stormwater is gonna go. Uh, we have, I believe, six design points. So there's a, one in Pawtucket Boulevard, Old Ferry, and then along each of the property lines um, to the north. And we just wanna know what these flows are so we can make sure that we're not increasing them um, under the proposed conditions. And that's, that's a requirement by the regulations not to increase the peak rates of runoff um, for your storm events. Moving forward, this is the proposed conditions stormwater map. Same design points that we analyzed, um, same outer area. Uh, it's just divided up a little bit differently on the inside so we can manage our stormwater. The way we're managing the stormwater is by a series of uh, dry detention basins for pretreatment and to infiltration basins for final treatment. Um, as part of the stormwater regs, we're required to reduce or not exceed the pre-development peak rates of flow. In addition, um, there's a, a host of water quality measures and recharge requirements uh, that we strive to achieve that we're meeting with this project. This is just a copy of the grading and drainage plan that's included in the plan set. Um, in the stormwater management uh, design, um, we are treating for water quality, the one inch water quality volume. And what that is, is um, a one inch 
volume that's over the impervious area that we're proposing at the property. We're required to do the one inch because we are technically called a land use with higher p potential pollutant loading, which is um, due to the parking facility that generates over a thousand vehicle trips per day. So that, that throws us into that one inch. Um, typically, redevelopment projects, you, you can get, it's the, the half inch. So we're, we're up above onto the one inch. Um, in addition with the LUPL, you're required for um, certain pretreatment devices prior to getting to your final treatment. So in our instances, we have um, our infiltration basins are our final treatment. So the water, when it fills in, there's a, a certain infiltration rate in the ground that will accept the water. Anything else, it, it will build up and then allow it to drain. Otherwise, there are some overflow devices that will connect it into the municipal, municipal drainage network, and ultimately it gets out to the river. Um, those, those outlets, um, we coordinated those with the Lowell Regional Wastewater Utility. They were okay with the design. Uh, they were actually happy to see that there was a kind of a relief valve with that overflow. Um, prior to getting into these uh, final infiltration basins, there's uh, extended dry detention basins for each one. And what those do is we're required to remove 44% um, of the total suspended solids. So that's some of the smaller particles that are coming off the pavement, the dirt, stuff coming off of your, your cars. Um, we're required to do 80% for the full treatment of these, uh, the whole treatment train of all of our stormwater management practices. But with the infiltration basins, it being a LUPL, we need to get 44% of those out before we hit those basins. So we, we have a series of sediment four bays as kind of our first, first defense on there. That will take out the 25%. Extended dry detention basins take out an additional 70%. So by the time we're getting to these infiltration basins, the, it, it's pretty clean. And those infiltration basins already, um, they'll also have a sediment four bay as another defense. And then it will get into the, the, the infiltration basin for final treatment. And that water quality volume is also achieved by that recharge um, capacity. So our basins, there's an outlet control structure um, that will be sitting there, and there's a, an orifice at the bottom, so a little hole punk, punched into, you know, like a concrete structure. And whatever volume is underneath that bottom elevation, that's our water quality volume, and that's what we're required to treat um, and recharge by the regulations. So we are meeting um, all the recharge and water quality volume requirements. Um, in addition, those basins are also providing that peak rate reduction. So we are significantly reducing um, the peak rates of runoff to the abutting properties um, significantly and in not increasing them towards the municipal network. So in review, that, that's pretty much um, the presentation for the the notice of intent application going over the primarily the floodplain and the stormwater management report, um, the current conditions, proposed conditions, and um, we, we'd certainly uh, like to open it up to questions. Oh, Pat, I have the, um, the certificate of mailings too. Okay, uh, I'm interested in a little more uh, uh, detail about uh, the construction of the uh, basins, both the dry basins and the uh, detention basins. Uh, it, you have a certain uh, elevation now. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, digging down to create those basins? Or are you creating uh, walls to raise everything? They, they will be slightly dug into the ground. Um, if I can, Pat, can I just back up a little bit on the, I don't know how to, Christine gave me the keyboard last time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. It's tough to, I don't know if my pointer didn't really, wasn't really working. I don't know if you can see it any better. Yeah. Um, so the basins themselves, so we have the basin to the, to the far right of the screen on the easterly side. That basin is probably a foot or two dug into the ground. 
Um, and then the basin along on the, the upper left, the northwest, um, on the top end of the basin, it's pretty much at grade. And then as you pull forward, that's where there's an existing slope from some of that um, old fill material. So we will be cutting some of that out. We, we have gone out, I should have mentioned this under my existing conditions. We've done, there's a geotechnical report that's been completed um, by DSM back in 2016. Uh, which we which we base the preliminary design on and then we've gone out this year and we've done additional test pits for the um, per the stormwater regs at each of these basin locations to to understand exactly where we're proposing our basins and what the what the groundwater is doing there um, the results of that what we, did you find out about the groundwater um, what we found out it was a little higher than we thought initially so that made us raise up our basins and we're still um, the two feet above the estimated seasonal high groundwater um, for the bottoms of these basins. And that, that was certified by a licensed soil evaluator. In addition, the engineering department has requested um, some permeability tests at, at these locations as well um, as a potential condition. And um, we're, we're certainly amenable to that as we get moving. Uh, what, what's the desired standard amount of uh, before you get to groundwater from the bottom of the basin to the where groundwater is for, for infiltration? The minimum is two feet. Okay, so you'd be at the minimum? Correct. And that still would handle the amount of stormwater that you're expecting? Correct. So part of the, the stormwater management design is we got to look at each basin and confirm that it drains completely within 72 hours. Those calculations are in the, in the stormwater report and we're, we're meeting those. Okay, so the, the, the basin in the rear then is going to be kind of high on one side and lower on the other is? Correct. So on the, the store side of it, it, it probably creates down. I mean, it's all at the same elevation at the bottom. It's just a matter of the, the entrance in the rear is slightly lower than the entrance in the front. So it'll be a couple different, a couple feet higher on the berm, but I mean, the water still only gets up a, a couple feet in that location. So is, okay. Bless you. Now, uh, I think I saw, this is kind of a different topic here, but I think I saw in your landscape plan that you seem to be leaving uh, some of the natural growth there as a buffer between the elks. In other words, it looks like this shrubbery there that isn't. Correct. So there is an easement in the back of the property. Are you going, I guess the question is, are you clearing right to your property line or are you leaving a buffer between this new project and the next property? We, it, it varies, I guess. Um, so in the north, let me pull up the, uh, sorry. So in order to, to get the volume, there's a, the basin on the upper left we will need to clear a little bit in that area. Um, and there is a, a fair amount of off-site flow that's coming in that we need to control in our basin as well that's coming off of that parking lot. So there will be some clearing, but then as you move forward further to the east, we are proposing not to, to clear that. There's a 20-foot 20, 20 wide easement in there, and that's um, for the land to the east. I think it's the, the Buddhist temple property. They, there's an access easement, a driveway easement that they have that straddles our property and the Elks property. So we're, we're, we're keeping our work outside of that. We don't want to impact that um, to cause any future issues. So we, we've actually, initially the building was set back a little further. We, we've pulled it all forward a little bit to stay out of that 20 foot. That, that uh, access on the, on the east side of your property is actually the cemetery road that comes from Varnum Avenue down to the cemetery. So it's uh, sort of a private road, actually. I think the, the easement for the cemetery comes from the north-south, is, is the my north understanding. The north from Varnum Avenue, right. It, um, correct. So we, we are staying outside of the, the property of the cemetery. Um, the applicant went through significant measures to, to research that cemetery as far back. Um, and who actually owns it. I believe it's the town of Dracut, and they haven't really accepted that, I guess, to my knowledge. Um, but we are, we're proposing not to touch it. Um, 
during the planning board process, they asked that we dedicate a couple parking spaces there. So if people want to go there, they certainly can and to provide a, you know, like a, a walking path to get over to that property. I, I, I do notice there were two different property lines on, uh, on that cemetery taken from apparently two different deeds. And you seem to be having an access road or something on top of one of the properties. Yep, as far as so there is an easement and there is the property line, but we are proposed we're not impacting the the access to get to that cemetery. Well, it, it's not only access, it's the fact that uh, certain historians have uh, have uh, stated that they think the uh, Indian people or Mar Native Americans and perhaps black people were buried off to the edge of that cemetery. And even though there's no stones right there, there could be graves. That would be my concern. And uh, I actually am supposed to have some ancestors in there, so oh, I'm a little personally involved with it. But uh, we, we didn't, I didn't seem to have a forum to ask you about it. So that's why I'm asking tonight. I know it's not a wetland issue, but uh, yeah, and I know um, the applicant has gone through significant measures to, to stay out of that area. Um, and I, if, if anything is unearthed or determined at during construction, certainly the so appropriate measures there, would be there was, there was encroachment by the drive-in when it was built as far as filling in part of that access road um, to raise the drive-in up. So part of that fill is actually on the road in, when you get into that area. Um, and I did see on some planning board notes or somewhere that uh, you were proposing uh, some signage or some parking area for people who might want to visit the cemetery. Correct. So on the, the far easterly, about midway point of the building along that edge, we have two signs there, um, and it, it says um, dedicated for the cemetery parking. I think the sign is lo it's shown on C3, uh, C2. Yeah, Clay, Clay Pit Cemetery Park, and we dedicated um, two spaces for. Um. Just to, to finish up on this topic, I also noticed something about a suggestion for shrubbery along that area to, uh, uh, I'm not exactly, uh, shrubbery can be good and bad when you have a, a situation like that. It could, it could hide certain activity that might occur in the cemetery or it could perhaps protect the cemetery. But I, I'm wondering if, uh, along with your gravel pathway, you might uh, put up some kind of a gate that could be open, but might be a, a good reference point for people that perhaps this is an area that's special that people shouldn't be just crossing into or throwing trash around or whatever. Um, I, I don't think a whole fence would, would be necessary or appropriate, but perhaps some kind of a just one length of uh, An ornamental type fence and one length eight. of fence on one side there just to denote that you know and perhaps the historical society could put up some kind of a sign that would uh, tell people what that actually was out there certainly I'll discuss that um, with the applicant and yeah thank you for letting me digress but uh, I've been sort of uh, very personally involved with that cemetery for my whole life and and uh, you know I haven't had an opportunity to ask you about it so well, we appreciate the I, I appreciate you thinking about it and perhaps uh, uh, doing some enhancement there because uh, you know the champions come and go for that cemetery and uh, you know it's all fixed up and then it's let to go again and then it's all fixed up again and uh, this project actually might uh, 
stabilize that area as far as the cemetery is concerned and uh, you know give it give it a reference point and make people know that you know this is it this is special this is something you know. Sounds good. Uh, the the landscape plan then uh, you have like I don't know hundreds of trees and bushes and shrubs and uh, I don't see a list of what it is you're proposing however do I Okay. It, it should be on the landscape. Right, so these plan. are the actual things here. Yeah, we, we heard the planning board at the, our concept hearing, you know, pretty loud and clear to, to beef up the landscaping as well. You know, the neighborhood group. Um, I think from our point of view, we're very interested in not having invasives there. Absolutely. And you've probably taken that into account, I would yes. imagine. Yes. Yep. And I also like the... Uh, you know, the use of, of native plants, I think, you know, that can uh, really be something that takes you through the seasons with uh, different flowering things at different times of the year. So um, I would, I would uh, you know, like to see a replacement program. I know uh, parking lot trees are really hard to hard to keep going past a certain point if the snow plows don't get them then you know they don't get enough water or something happens and uh, I, I would like to see some kind of a program to keep keep those plantings going I don't know if runoff from the parking lot is going to affect kill off uh, plants in your basins from the salt I don't know but uh, no, they, so yeah, the, the plants along the edge of the basin are below where the water level would, are above where the water level would be. Um, in addition, all the islands are curbed. Um, so yeah, we're not concerned about, you know, the runoff getting onto them. But certainly, I, I know market baskets are going to want to, you know, maintain it. And I don't think they'll stand for a lot of, you know, dead trees in their parking lot. Yeah. But uh, I don't know if, if that's a standard condition of planning board either. But I think that would... Be okay <laughs> well, I'm just I'm just hopeful that those basins are going to be kind of self-maintaining and not require a lot of uh, uh, maintenance by landscapers and you know then they have a better chance of, of uh, yeah continuing. So there is a an operation and maintenance plan um, that was included with the stormwater report which which identifies what needs to happen um, in specific times to, to, to monitor or clean it and to make sure that they're functioning properly. Um, I was wondering a little bit about the, uh, like the raising up of the store. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what, what does that look like as far as the neighborhood is concerned? Uh, if you're in the Elks parking lot, your store is going to be, or your uh, base for your store is going to be a lot higher than it is right now. Is that um, yeah, so this, this came up at planning board as well, this exact question. And we're actually, in, in one corner, the, east, the westerly corner, we're, we're actually shaving the site a little bit, kind of, you know, filling it a little bit to the, to the right. So we're not significantly increasing um, the grade. We're just keeping it up above the, the elevation of the floodplain. But overall, the building itself is between 32 to 34 feet. And we're not or 36 feet, and we're not increasing the grade um, by four feet at the store. Um, so we're, the planning board's concern was making sure that we're still under that 40-foot height, uh, which we are. We don't, we don't have any renderings that depict it with the actual setting for the property, um, but it's not significantly getting built up on a hill and then going um, vertical. That the store is about 30, so, 32 uh, to 36. How, is it uh, catch basins or how? It's not sheet flow then that's going into those rear basins? Yeah, um, it, it's a great question. It, it primarily is sheet flow. Um, due to the elevation um, challenges with the site, idea, you know, most development, you, you do the catch basins and the pipe networks and discharge into the basin. Um, we don't really have the room to lift up the site to get adequate cover for those pipe systems. Um, so we are sheet flowing pretty much from the front of the store down to the, to the basin at the bottom of the property. 
um, and those go through the, the treatment train of the sediment four bay and that dry detention basin prior to going to the, being discharged to the right into that infiltration basin. Similarly in the rear, um, that, that loading dock area will sheet flow um, to some curb breaks that will then um, allow it to get into the de detention basin in the rear. The only piping network for the, for the storm water that we have is to handle the, the roof drain runoff and the, the roof header's coming off, so we're, we're, we have a little extra elevation to get out to the, um, the basin to the left there at the entrance. So we, we can fit the, the, the roof drain piping to discharge it to that location. And it also at the landscaped area, the large landscaped area in the left side of the site, um, in the middle, we're, we're putting in a little area drain. And that's just to c collect any snow melt runoff to allow that to not have to travel across the pavement and then just get into the basin. Um, some of their existing sites, their older sites, if you see some of their mounds of snow, it's kind of flowing forever across the pavement um, in the springtime. So that, that's a way we're, we're avoiding that. Okay, well, I, I'd, like, I'd like our uh, stormwater experts here to uh, have a few words. <laughs> this is um, Caitlin. So are you um, taking account some of that she flow from the Elks? Did I see? Correct. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a fairly significant area coming off that they have. And that's going to drain on to your property, you're assuming? Yes. Being conservative again. So that, yeah, so we are managing that coming on. That flow, okay. Um, what triggered the MEPA review? The, the need for the access permit and the, the 300 park greater than 300 parking spaces. Okay. And the mass DOT, yeah, the access permit. Okay. And, yep. and then is, are you in the ACEC? No, we're not within no. ACEC. Okay. And then, so MEPA loved everything. We're good. Um, they had comments? Great input. Yeah, I mean, um, the standard, yeah, coordinate with the, the, the departments. Okay. Um, so there's section 61 findings for the um, offsite mitigation. Um, They've you know, agreed to certain monetary funds for that uh, transportation improvements. They, they took a hard look at a lot of those resiliency measures and we, we incorporate what we can. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so no su huge concerns or whatnot from you? No. Um, you have a DEP file number? Yes. Um, yeah, did you have comments from D DEP? I looked today and there were no comments. No comments but, today. So the, the file number is uh, 206-0786. Okay. Um, this is a really random question. Um, are, is Market Basket concerned with flooding? I'm assuming they wouldn't build this here if they... Are they concerned with it? No. Yeah, like that their building's ever going to get flooded? No. No, okay. No, we're above it, yeah. You're above it, and then you're at, the, like you said, the 158. Correct. Okay. Um, did Market Basket buy JJ Boomers? They actually own that parcel. They own the parcel. Correct. Okay, because it seems like you need that parcel in order to get your um, storage for the regrading. We're right on the edge, so that yeah, that parking lot is actually sheet flowing in. Yeah. To be honest, it would probably be easier if we didn't include this. Really? Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, the tree situation, it seems like every market basket I've ever been to has a sprinkler system. Yes. So, uh, so like, them drying out, I don't think that's a good thing. Correct, story. yeah, they, they will have a... Okay. Um, the test pits, you said the planning board is going to make you do perk, perk rate tests? That was a comment um, from the engineering department okay. um, to do perk tests at the, the locations of the basin um, prior to construction. Okay. And you guys are going to do that? If it's a condition of approval, correct. Yes. Okay. <laughs> um, what, what was the groundwater elevation at? Um, I don't have the specifics. Um, it was significant so the when they dug the test pits the water was pretty low but the way the estimated seasonal high groundwater works is they look at the the modeling and determine where that high elevation is so in some of the cases it was four feet above where that standing water actually was um, and that that's what was i guess in our initial design with the concept plan um, we didn't think it was coming up that high mm -hmm. and then when we actually had that the, the soil evaluator. Look at that from the initial geotech borings 
and with the new test pits, that, that kind of modified some of our um, design parameters that we, we so were dealing with. Did you go, you went wider with some of the basins? Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah it, 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 yes. Okay. Um, and it modified the, we went with that dry detention basin design. Um, we were trying to incorporate some rain gardens, but it, it um, the rain gardens, you need another two feet on top of that to make it work. So it just wasn't, it wasn't working out. Okay. Um, so, um, to mimic one of the comments from the fire department, um, just, I think having signs behind the building, no parking there. Absolutely. Just because again, we consider um, a car volume in the floodplain. So, um, and then this is again, I think completely out of our jurisdiction, but um, the engineering department said recommended surveillance of the cemetery. Thank you. Yeah, it's completely out of our jurisdiction, but I, I think. Um, so, so Market Basket, they do put surveillance cameras on the front light poles. Yeah. Um, so I don't think adding maybe another one um, will be an issue. Get a zoom into the, <laughs> that. Yeah, just because, again, that is near and dear. I don't know if they want to be responsible for actively monitoring, monitoring that. No, but just, it, you know, I think it could be there. Yeah, if anything happens, give us your tapes kind of thing. Um, Okay, and then um, I think I think you did a great job. I didn't know if you guys were going to be able to do it, but you are mitigating all the volumes. Um, they're all done correctly at each, like you said, elevation interval, and then you actually added um, compensatory flood storage. So I'm getting like 43,000 cubic feet. So that you're adding. Yeah, we 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 were certainly over. I know that. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. Approved. Yeah. Um, could you provide us with a construction timeline um, or, and for uh, landscaping, like when will all those plantings be done? Yeah, I, I know they were, I mean, potentially, I don't know exactly their time frame. Maybe, maybe. You know, I don't think we're going to be putting a shovel in the ground this year, but we're hoping for an opening in late 19 if that's possible. Um, you know, we need to get through planning board through the appeal period and then you're into you know the winter months so I don't think they're going to start construction but you never know you could have a warm December and get maybe a footings in the ground but we're hoping you know it moves along pretty quickly it's usually within a year to uh, maybe even less than a year if we start early in the springtime and get moving on it and how long do you think from start to finish it will uh, uh, 12, approximately 12. take 12 to 14 months, you know, they're not going to even, that store probably won't even open until everything's 100% landscaping, irrigation, paving, all of that is done, lighting. You know, our biggest concern really with this whole project is going to be traffic mitigation. So that's what planning board is concerned about. And I think that's the big issue we want to deal with. But uh, we're going to, you know, they do, a, they do a fantastic job wherever they do. If you've been out to Littleton or you've been out to Westford or some of the newer developments that they've done. And it's... Uh, they're even, you know, going to dress up. I know they're going to do work in the parking lot where J.J. Boom is. They're also doing work across the river at the Wood Street store. That's all going to be rehabbed in the front and parking. So it's hopefully, you know, they're, they're looking at that whole lower area, and hopefully this is going to mitigate some of the traffic that won't need to go over the bridge to go to Wood Street. They're going to stay on this side of the river, hopefully. Thank you. Um, so we received a comment from the DPW about the applicant retaining a third party consultant to um, review the construction process. Um, and I was wondering if you had seen that comment or put any thought into it. Is that the environmental monitor? Yes. During construction? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, we see that with a lot of projects um, in the area. So I think um, whomever that is to... A lot of times it would be, you know, one of the design team engineers, if it's a third party, that's fine as well. Um, but I think it's, yeah, paid for by the applicant and kind of monitored and overseen by the city. So, um, yeah, I don't see that being an issue. Okay. You've answered all. You've addressed and answered all the questions that I would have asked, so thank you very much. 
Okay. At, at this point, uh, we can open up the uh, floor for the uh, uh, members of the public that would like to speak. Do we have anyone that would like to speak for or against this project? Uh, good evening. My name is John Hamlet. I live at 495 Varnum Avenue, and I am representing the Pawtucketville Citizens Council. We are the local neighborhood action group. Uh, we are reeling from this project. Um, it really wasn't until today we saw uh, Mr. Burns' memo to the planning board where we learned that the new traffic is going to average about 5,000 cars a day during the week, 10,000 cars on the weekend, or 45,000 new, new car trips every week. onto a two-lane road. So, the Pawtucketville Citizens Council has not been before the Conservation Commission in a while, and I just wanted to provide a couple minutes of background. Uh, in the last 11 years, most of this lot has been underwater twice, both in the Mother's Day flood and the following flood, where we were at 102, 103 feet. In the last 80 years, it's been underwater about eight times. Uh, in the Mother's Day flood, 72 houses in our neighborhood were damaged or destroyed. If you go on to the city engineer's website, you will see that in time of a flood, Old Ferry and Pawtucket Boulevard are closed. I'm not sure what happens to Market Basket if there's a fire, or, and, but they're the ones building in the middle of the floodplain, you may be wondering why there's a little island that's not in the floodplain where they're putting the store. Uh, that's Phil. If you walk down, somebody in the past, maybe the people who own the drive-in filled it, not Market Basket, but you can clearly see it. Uh, when we were uh, involved with the community of Kabir, Kabir Buddhist monks, uh, the property adjacent to uh, the drive-in theater. Uh, we learned that this area floods first from Clay Pit Brook, which is to the north. And as it, it actually floods first, it's lower, and it floods before the Merrimack. So in general, this area floods much earlier than the Merrimack River. So the hydrological graph that we get provided by NOAA uh, is usually off by about 24 hours. So you can see why this is a sensitive area for our neighborhood. Um, I have no doubt that some of the best engineering minds in the world have developed the com compensatory storage uh, areas that are appropriate, but this is an extremely complex and extremely sensitive area. And as representing the neighborhood, we are going to respectfully request a peer review um, to take a look at uh, the facts and the figures. Um, the figures I gave you before, 5,000 new trips a day and 10,000 on a weekend, that was taken on a Labor Day weekend. So those are conservative figures. And the peer review that's taking place for the planning board is only for traffic, and we'll find out if those figures change. So my only request is uh, that you consider a peer review, particularly of uh, the impact of flooding on the neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Massey, 250 Tottenham Road. Um, one question came up with the engineer, which was they talk about there's two feet between the groundwater and where your bottom of your basins are. And so you've studied the groundwater for that. Have you made any of your modeling based upon what's happening at the dam? But the dam, they're putting on a new bladder dam on the top. 
where they used to have boards that, that fell over. That's going to increase, by their definitions, this is the boot hydro people who are just here, by at least a foot the groundwater in our neighborhood. So I would suggest that the commission make them at least take a look at what's going on down at the dam and figure out if that modeling is, is correct. Is there really two foot that this water can go into or is it going to be one foot? You really can't go on the past. You probably have to look at the future, what's going on down at the dam. There was, they, they, they had to do a backwater study. The groundwater comes in from the river and raises up. And it's been going higher and higher for years and what they're doing down there now is increasing it by about a foot. So it might be wise from an engineering standpoint to make sure you do your homework on that. And it might be wise for you to make that a condition of this. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, David Owen, 26 Old Ferry Road. I was here a couple of years ago for my planting beds. Thank you. Yep. Uh, a couple of points. Number one, I am the closest resident, so I'm the most impacted by everything, including the 5,000 cars on a weekday and 10,000 cars on the weekend, because based on their own numbers Monday night, greater than 50% of that traffic is coming from Varnum down Old Ferry and going back towards Varnum, which means I'll never get out of my driveway. So, heads up. I know when I requested to do my planting bed, somebody made a comment of, you think this is bad, wait till you have to try and repave your driveway. Would you? And my, my, one of my biggest question is, adding all this pavement to this site, where's the runoff going into the ground when we flood? Because those pipes that are running to drain into the river aren't gonna drain into the river if the river floods. It's gonna drain into my yard and into my house. So what's gonna replace the drainage if we pave over all that parking lot? Because right now it's just soil and water seeping into the soil. Because I know it was questioned on my planting beds whether the bottoms were solid or whether it was gonna drain through. And it was a big stickler that it couldn't be solid because it would retain the water. So what's the story with the pavement? I'd like to understand that information. Um, as far as the foot for foot replacement for, so for water storage, I know when I had to do my work, every foot of grade that I took up, I had to replace on my lot. If they're gonna fill in the land where the, where the building's going, where are they making the compensation from? Because no other part of the site is high enough to be at the same grade. And if the water runoff is coming from the Elks towards their site, that means they're lower grade than the Elks is. So where are we gonna make that compensation? Because I know that was a big stickler for me. Um, again, they said the site was approximately 14 acres and greater than 50% of that pavement is in the flood zone, so I'd like to understand that. Um, where else was I? I think that's all I have for notes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I had uh, opportunity to, uh, to watch the uh, planning board um, uh, hearing uh, for this project on television and I did hear the planning board uh, speaking uh, on several occasions about the uh, peer review that they were requesting and uh, we we happen to have uh, a couple of professional engineers here on our board but we're also all, all have day jobs and uh, I think it's asking a bit much for uh, anybody on this board to, uh, you know, sit down and spend a lot of time with these figures. So uh, I, I was actually, when I uh, came in here, I was uh, in favor of, as well as the planning board, asking the, uh, for a uh, conservation peer reviewer uh, to look at the stormwater and the uh, floodplain issues. And uh, this is probably uh, the biggest project that's come before us in the last 10 years. Uh, it's uh, in a neighborhood that's going to be greatly impacted if the figures aren't right. And 
I don't know if you suffer from stress, but I would, if I were doing these figures and something happened in a few years and everybody ended up underwater and your name was still on the tip of their tongues, I wouldn't want to be that person. So uh, I, I, I'll throw this out to the board, but uh, we, we have in the past for certain uh, complex projects asked for a peer review and it, it worked out well, everyone got along and, and uh, you know, it wasn't necessarily anybody that we knew personally, but uh, it was just another set of eyes to, uh, to look at not the whole project, but the parts that are concerning the Conservation Commission. So I don't, I don't know if anyone else on the commission has some views on that point. Kaylin? Um, I, one of the abutters brought up a good point. It looks like one of the overflows flows to a catch basin, which is at 149.5, which is below the 100-year flood. So if the, during the 100-year flood, when that basin overflows, you know, the catch basin that it's flowing to would already be inundated. Um, what sheet are you looking at? Um, C3. That, that was a question that popped in my mind since I was walking around in the last flood myself. Uh, was that, uh, you know, how can the overflow go into catch basins that are probably going to be uh, at capacity before the basins overflow? So I was mm -hmm. a little confused about that myself. And um, just to touch upon what you're saying about the accuracy of the plans, um, I did notice that the existing conditions, which were was provided in the application, um, that plan was not stamped by an engineer or a PLS, and um, none of the sheets provided by VHB were stamped by a PLS. Um, and I think that, you know, on a site this big with this many flooding issues, it would be important to have, have a land surveyor look at all the details. So you're in favor of having a, a peer another review. review? A peer review. It could be a combination planning and conservation review if planning is also requesting. It might not water. necessarily be the same person, however. If we, one person's looking at traffic and another is looking at oh, planning. Storm We're going to go through with a peer review process with the planning board. The big issue is the traffic. We've come here tonight. We're dealing with a parcel of land that's been in the same condition for 40 years. We have a bowling alley next door that's much lower than we are. When there's a flood, and there has been a couple of floods, that area floods. Where the Dunkin' Donuts is, there's a little bit of flooding there. It may be in the next hundred years that we have some severe storms that bring the water up. It may get to the point where they have to close the market basket for a day or a half a day because of water levels. But, you know, we're here to try to improve an area and create what the engineer has talked about, bringing water that's coming off of the Elks parking lot directing it in the right direction so it can go into catch basin so it can slowly but surely go to the right place which is into the river. Um, you have a, a gentleman that was here before the board for the planning board. He has a house at the corner of Old Ferry Road. I drove by Old Ferry Road today. That looks like it should be underwater all the time. I don't even know how it ever got approved and my understanding from Mr. Pichette was that you people did not approve that house through the conservation and they had to go to the state to get it approved. So there are two houses way up the street. Otherwise, we're talking about the bowling alley, we're talking about JJ Boomers, we're talking about the entrance of Old Ferry Road, and we're talking about the Elks. That's the general vicinity that we're in. And, you know, we want to do the best for this city. The market basket people have been here for over 100 years. They do everything they can to make this community better. They're not going to do anything that's going to try to create a problem, whether it's for neighbors on Townsend Avenue or at the end of Old Ferry Road. But I don't know how long a peer review would take on a conservation level, if it's kind of timely with what they're doing with the planning board. That's fine, but I don't want to get into a situation where we're stringing this along with engineering. We've spent a lot of time, a lot of money with engineering, and I think you see the results where we're here before you to present a plan that we think works. I think everybody here has accepted that as, as, a, as a pretty good plan, and we're happy to uh, take your comments. But to have somebody come up and indicate that there should be a peer review for conservation, 
we know what the situation is here. I'm a lifelong resident of Lowell, been here for 60 years, used to go to the Lowell drive-in. You also, uh, uh, Commissioner Varnum, have lived in the area your whole life. Uh, we know what the situation is. There may be a period when there is flooding out there. I'm not saying there won't be, but we've been taking a lot of measures to control that, and hopefully, you know, we're looking at the positive end of it, and we don't have a, a situation where we're causing a problem to anybody in the neighborhood that's living up Townsend or living up at the end of Old Ferry. Thank you. Okay, I, I don't think we need to uh, get too overwrought about this. I think it's, uh, if the plan is a good one, it probably wouldn't take long to uh, review it. If it's uh, been well designed and uh, someone who uh, is knowledgeable could probably uh, take that and, uh, you know, get through it in a, in a number of, uh, who knows. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't think you have anything to fear by having another set of eyes look at it. And I don't think by, uh, I don't think you should blame the neighbors for asking for the peer review. As I said, I was, I was uh, questioning that myself before I heard your proposal. So uh, uh, it, it, I think what we need to keep in mind is that it isn't just this neighbor or that neighbor that's affected and uh, it's it's the whole neighborhood and I I was flooded myself my house has been there with the second oldest house in Lowell and it didn't get in the house they knew what they were doing that way but uh, it came right up to the doorstep so uh, it's not just your immediate adjoining neighbors that are concerned it's that whole area the whole area, all the way down to Lowell General Hospital, was underwater. The whole Pawtucket Boulevard. So uh, you can't say that we're just going to affect this neighbor or that neighbor shouldn't worry. It, it's really the whole neighborhood. And uh, I've heard tonight people uh, sat down and said, oh, all my neighbors are, are for this project. They, they love the idea of having a store there. So I don't think anybody's trying to stop your project. It's just that they're they're trying to protect their, uh, you know, their 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 living, their their homes, and uh, this is the point where it won't delay things. This is the point to look at it a little more closely, uh, not when it's half up or not after the next huge rain period comes and and they're already underwater. You know, this is the point where nobody's hot under the collar. They just want to know. You know, uh, did we look at it closely enough? Has everything been done? Uh, was there anything overlooked? And uh, I, I, ju I just think it's a smart idea. And you can say yourself that, you know, we had our engineer that we have confidence in. He came up with a great plan. We had someone else totally unrelated look at it, and they couldn't find anything wrong with it. And uh, we're ready to go. And your your idea about uh, I'm going to be flooded out is uh, probably not going to come to pass. So that's the way I look at it. It's not that we're questioning your engineer or his work. Uh, it's just that we are a board of. We used to say we were volunteers, but now since uh, we get paid a few dollars a month, we can't say we're volunteers anymore. But we're close to it. <laughs> So uh, I, I don't know. We'll take a vote on it, but uh, I, I don't. I have a yeah. I have a question. Um, so I want to answer your question about the pavement. So the reason why we can allow it here is because they are they've done a stormwater study, and they're treating the runoff, and they're also meeting the criteria for the recharge to groundwater. So when we were talking about your driveway, if you wanted to extend it. If you wanted to put in a treatment system like they have, we would approve it. But you, as a homeowner, you wouldn't want to do that. You specifically said if I had to replace it, good luck. Or, no, I, well, you would need a permit. It would have to be exactly at the same elevation, all that. So I just want to answer your driveway question. I, I wouldn't worry about storm runoff. I'm worried about flood water and water's going to come. Yeah. So then that goes to my next question. 
the dam comment that you made, is that in a report that the groundwater elevation is going up one foot? Do we know what report that is? So there's been a study uh, done. There, there, are, there are two studies. One was done by Enel, and then a counter study was done by the city of Lowell, uh, paid by the city of Lowell by independent engineers. And if a copy of that is still not available, I have copies. I can get them to you. DPD certainly has them. And are there specifics in that report that says, you know, the, the average groundwater elevation in this area is X, by you doing the inflatable dam, it's going to bring it to Y? Like, is it literally that detailed? So, Commissioner, if I understand your question, you're asking me to remember the detail of a 175-page engineering report that I read four years ago. Correct. <laughs> if I may at this time take the Fifth Amendment. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I was just curious. Could we have Steve, you speak at the microphone? Like, you're going to have to. So the point is that the dam did get approved to put in a new system that will, in fact, raise the level average level of that river by about a foot. That's been approved through uh, FERC, been a through, you know, reports that's been going on for since uh, the flood, 06. This has been going on. They got approved. The neighborhood lost their battle trying not to have it happen. But it does infect all that soil in the river is like beet sand, and you know, they know this by the soil reports. So when you have that thing come up, it doesn't just come up a little way, it goes all the way in. It goes right into to Vinam Ave, into the houses between the boulevard and Vinam Ave. So there is data on that. I don't know, I'm not an engineer. All I'm suggesting that they probably should look at this data, because it doesn't sound like they did and make sure that that groundwater is in fact where they think it is and not going to be because they're just finishing this bladder right now. Tomorrow they'll probably be putting those things up or this week for mm -hmm. good. So you need to just make sure on that from an engineering standpoint that you have this two foot between the bottom of those basins and the groundwater. Mm -hmm. That's all, it's just smart engineering. And, and, and yeah. I, would, I would listen to Stephen Massey because I think he probably has a few phone numbers of people at FERC. That's how involved he is with all of this. <laughs> so I, I think if you Google backwater study Lowell, um, it's a PDF at the uh, UMass Lowell website and community partners plat partnership platform. But there are two of them. That's what's important. One was paid for and done by Enel. One was paid for and done by the city of Lowell. And I can get those names to you. But it was re it referred to as a backwater study. A lot of it was focused on the clay pit brook and the fact that it was flooding earlier and faster than the effects of the Merrimack flooding because the clay pit brook flows into the Merrimack, but the culvert gets blocked by the floodwaters. And so you have the catchment area water coming down as well as the Merrimack River backing up, and that's what causes the problem. Do, have you guys done a study like at a 500 year storm, you guys will flood? Like, do you know what? As part of the MEPA process, we were looking at kind of the future flooding and how that kind of impacts, um, and everything performed adequately on that. Um, as far as, I guess, some of the groundwater elevations with a dam rising, I mean, I'm not a hydrogeologist and understanding all the groundwater flow if you put a, a dam up here, but there's, there's multiple ways that that water's going to, you know, it's not like that dam is going all the way under the ground at a, you know, it, it's confined within the river. So it's still coming around at some point, groundwater-wise. Um, I do know we, we have coordinated with multiple city staff um, it is getting reviewed by DEP, um, so we, you know, we're confident in our design of what we're providing. We're applying by all the uh, regulations and standards, um, and the, the city staff that have reviewed it um, have had no issues with it as well. I guess for the board, if you guys 
if we wanted a peer review, what are the questions you want answered? I think I would want to have them look at, at the stormwater report and um, the regulations um, regarding BLSF. Like what, what do you mean regulations? Like um, Just that all the provisions in the act are being met for um, the performance standards, I guess, for. Yeah, I don't think updating. we got a copy of the stormwater report, did we? You would have electronically. It was electronically, okay. Okay, I, I have in mind uh, just what we, uh, what a peer review, I have in mind just a review to look at what you're proposing, not propose anything new necessarily, but look at what you're proposing, uh, dot the I's, cross the T's, check the, check the grammar, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I'm interested in, in the floodplain issues as well as the stormwater issues. So uh, uh, does anyone else have a, uh, want to say a word about uh, reviewing this project? So you're just looking for like a simple peer review, because I guess like we start opening up to the I'm not looking for anybody dam. to go out there and redo the surveying or anything like that, and it, and I don't think it would be anything that would delay the project particularly if we could um, uh, engage somebody in a reasonable amount of time. I know there's a holiday coming up next week, so or sometime soon. Well, I'm just again what's gonna satisfy you guys. Because doing a peer review, analyzing the dam, is like this whole huge study. I would, like, I would not suggest analyzing the dam. All I would suggest is have your peer review and say, hey, is this groundwater where these guys say it's gonna be? That's all. Mm -hmm. If you get a peer to say, yeah, we agree with them, fine. That's good. But just make sure somebody looks at it and says, ooh, the dam, because they didn't think about the dam. They didn't know. We're saying know about it, have a peer review, and that can be one of your questions. Is that groundwater where they say it is? That's all. It's pretty simple. Is that where it's going to be going forward, not just the past? When you guys do the perk test, won't some of those questions be answered? At how? Or not? I, I, as far as the dam goes, I have no idea. As far as, you know, yeah. when is this baffle coming? Um, I, I don't know. But the. It, it's still, so the, the, the existing test pits that we've done, um, they've all been adjusted for regional wells in the area um, as part of the Frimter method to, that also increased, you know, our, our baseline groundwater elevation. Um, but yeah, certainly the, the permeability test, that, that's not more of a groundwater test, that's more of just telling us how fast that's the water's going to get into the ground uh, to, to confirm the actual infiltrates used in the modeling to confirm that, you know, the basin's going to drain as fast as we're showing it will. It, it's not really a groundwater test. Test, yeah. So was groundwater determined by the method or actual test pits in the field? Actual test pits in the field. Okay. So you had we, said something about borings um, earlier? So in 2016, um, when Market Basket was initially looking um, to ramp up their redevelopment efforts here, they did some uh, a geotechnical report. Um, the report is included in our stormwater report. Um, and they did a series of borings of where they thought the building was going to be located. There was also consideration for like an out parcel building as well that would be located between, you know, um, the JJ Boomers and the Market Basket. Um, some of the soil conditions there weren't allowing for that. So that, that was kind of the initial study for that, was to understand what's going on. Um, we use that for the preliminary design. Once we figured out where these basins and all that want to go, to tighten up the design, we go out per the regs and, and get the additional data. And, and that's what the final report's based on, is that um, final data with the actual test pits with an excavator. The geotech was on site, um, a soil evaluator was on site, um, and the, those reports are in the report as well. And how many borings did you do? Are we like talking about one or like 10? Um, well, the borings that they initially did, I forget, there was a series of them. Um, the test pits we did, we probably did, it was about three per basin, so we had probably 12, 12 okay. to 15, yeah. Yeah.
Okay. Uh, any more comments from the board? Just to follow up on Katie's. Uh, the scope, scope of the study, I'm, I'm not 100% sure what all of the factors were that were affecting the abutter, but would that be appropriate to address in, in a peer review whether or not these are, these are valid concerns or did you respond to that? What do you mean? About him getting flooded sooner because water is flowing someplace. So a peer reviewer would make sure that there were um, no off-site impacts from the runoff. That's one of the things that they would look at when they okay. do the review. Okay, great. Then that's that's one of the things we'd like to look at. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I guess at this point uh, we might have a motion concerning the peer review. Do we want to get, um, is there a peer reviewer that the board typically uses or? Well, we, I think we first need to uh, decide if we want to vote to have a peer review and then uh, coordination with, uh, with the office, we could uh, find someone that's uh, independent of either the city or the, uh, or the market basket people. If we can get this done in a timely manner, I think it shouldn't be a big issue. Would you like to make that motion? Um, I'll make a motion to um, consult with the peer reviewer for this project. Concerning what, though? Let's uh, concerning the performance standards of BLSF and um, the stormwater report. Okay. And the floodplain issues? Uh, yes, that would be the uh, BLSF. Oh, okay. All right. Bordering so, and subject to flooding. Sorry. Which so is we, the, the we want them to review the stormwater report? Yes. Okay, so I think it's review the stormwater report, see if there are any off-site runoff impacts, and... And perhaps investigate that, uh, uh, the NL report. Just take a, take a look at it. Hmm. Like yeah, I just don't want this to be like a... It'd be costly. I it's think. so costly, and it, it's not direct. It, it, even if the, the river does increase a foot, it doesn't necessarily mean at that site the groundwater's increased, unfortunately. Yeah. Just check it. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All the evidence is anecdotal. We, we, have, we have neighbors who are running the third sump pump and the fourth sump pump, yeah. you know, vo volumes are increasing. Um, the dam is almost finished. The water level is high. Uh, it's only a few hundred feet from the Merrimack. Uh, the Merrimack backwater pool, whatever you call it, goes back 11 miles. So if any area is going to be impacted, it's probably going to be the floodplain that's seven-tenths of a mile away from the dam. Um, I'd, I'd like to see something in there that, that addresses that. It doesn't have to be a full-blown study, but something. And as far as should more compensation be needed, I think you have like an overflow of parking out there. Just perhaps make the basins bigger or something. I don't know, but I'm just saying. Uh, well, they already have that 40,000 yeah. um, extra cubic feet of compensation, yeah. so. Yeah. No, I, I mean, if the report should show that. That they don't. That they need more. Uh, okay, I, I'm a little lost here. We had a motion uh, to uh, to uh, develop a, a peer review for this uh, particular issues affecting the Conservation Commission. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second that motion. You have a second. Is there any further discussion? Pat, do you Not got what it's regarding? Could you just uh, clarify in kind of a more concise? Yeah. So um, the, what you're looking for? <laughs> so the peer review will review the stormwater report submitted by VHB. Mm -hmm. um, determine if there's any off-site runoff impacts. Um, check the com compensatory storage calcs which is in the stormwater report and like uh, review groundwater elevation any change, any cha yeah any change in groundwater elevation based on um, changes in the dam okay 
Could you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, review any groundwater elevation changes. That may be. That may be, like, future in the dam. But we got to, like, draw a limit on this. Like, it's yeah, it is important. Or just, just determine if the dam, the new dam, has is changing the groundwater elevation at this site. I think if the peer reviewer could just do a cursory review of that report and just kind of summarize it for us to, to look at, I think that would probably be sufficient. Mm -hmm. Uh, are we looking okay, at, so say, we, a two-week, or are we looking at a longer period of time for this type of peer review? Um, if we, once we get a peer reviewer, I, I don't think it would take more than two weeks um, for them to complete the review. like to have, hopefully, before we go back to the planning board, so we have things in order here at the Conservation Commission prior to going back to planning board on October 1. I don't think you could expect it for our next meeting of September 8th, but we do have a meeting on September 26th. Okay. Um, Thank you. And we can try to expedite finding someone that can do that work. Yeah, Pat, if you could say that they could be prepared, um, get their findings by the um, September 26th meeting. Okay, we've had a motion. Uh, Patrick's got it all written down over there. We've had a second. Uh, do we have a vote here? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, I, I, I'm confident that this isn't going to delay you because you still have a couple other boards that are working on the project. I, I have no problem with the, uh, the extra work that needs to be done. I'm just trying to coordinate time-wise, but so should we entertain a motion to continue it to the 26th of September? Is that what we're doing? I, I think we put that in. That's part of the motion? Yeah. The motion. Okay. And, and if for whatever reason it, it's not completed, then, you know, just work with the office to push it back, because there's no point of you keep showing up if, if it's not completed for whatever reason. Right, but hopefully we can yeah. try to work to expedite this so we're not looking at, you know, sometime in late October for a conservation due to a peer review that's being delayed. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I actually think it I would maybe be helpful just to have a motion to continue to the 26th meeting. Sure. Um, just to kind of clarify. Cle clean it up. Yeah. I'll make a motion to continue this to the, um, what is it, September 26th 26. 26th meeting. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so let's see about the, the hearing is open. I think we probably want to leave it open and uh, have a motion to continue at the request of the applicant? Yeah, I, I think that's the best idea. We have the peer review hopefully is completed. We can come back on the 26th and hopefully wrap everything up at that time. Okay. So All right. That so that, that motion to continue motion from to somebody? Continue. Motion to Bonnie? continue. Bonnie? We already Seconded did it. By Second. We already did it, though. We did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we did. I think we did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, do we have, and if there's anything on your end too, um, obviously you guys, like Eric, if you want to look into that, you know, if there's anything, but I'm sure you kind of covered your bases, so. Yep. Yep. Yeah, we'll, uh, yeah, coordinate and then we'll, we'll coordinate with Pat. To, okay. To get forward. If we get the report from, we'll, we'll send it your way. Okay, uh, so thank you for your presentation, and uh, we'll you. see you in about a month, I guess. Uh, that brings us to the end of our agenda, unless there's some other business, Patrick? Nothing? Okay, uh, we have no more work to do on Market Basket, so motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconded by Caitlin. The Caitlins are really a yeah, duo Caitlin's tonight. A <laughs> okay, thank you and good night. <laughs>